Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm Christopher Locke. I'm the IBPA member liaison. And welcome to the Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits webinar. Uh, we want to give members a more in-depth webinar experience to learn about their member benefits. And we are very pleased today. We have MPD Books. Uh, they're going to talk about BookScan and PubTrack Digital. So uh, let me tell you very quickly a little bit about the uh, NPD books and what they do. Um, NPD Group provides crucial business data and insight to clients across 20 sectors in 19 countries, helping them to get the right products to the right consumers at the right place and times. NPD Books provides this crucial data on the U.S. book industry, helping publishers, distributors, content providers, retailers, and agents make smart decisions from strategy to editorial and operation to sales and marketing. If uh, you want to uh, know more about what that means, just keep watching for the next uh, 30 minutes. All right, so I'm going to introduce our two wonderful representatives. Uh, again, we very much appreciate them being here today. Uh, the first one is uh, David Walters. So um, as executive director of client development for MPD Books, David Walter leads a team managing client relationships with companies of all sizes in and around the publishing industry. David's team supports clients with MBT's key book scan and pub track digital data sets and helps them use data to succeed in evolving publishing marketplace. David has spent over a decade working with data in the book industry, originally in his native UK and in New York since 2015. And then we have uh, the wonderful Brianna O'Driscoll. Brianna is a senior account executive, business development for MPD Books, the team behind MBG Book Scam. Brianna O'Driscoll helps publishing, film and television industry professionals stay relevant and competitive by connecting them with the data and insights needed to understand the ever-changing trends in the publishing world. Brianna has 14 years of experience with MPD book scan and related services, makes her an expert resource for clients and independent publishers who want to make better strategic decisions in today's publishing market. All right, very exciting. So now I'm going to pass it over to you all, and thank you again for being here. Great, thank you for the introduction. I'm going to now share my screen. You may need to just enable sharing for me. Give me two seconds and I will give you. you the ball. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thanks again everyone for attending and uh, welcome from us on the MPD side. Uh, Christopher covered a lot of this, but um, what we'll cover today is the, uh, the member benefit as it relates to, to BookScan. Um, BookScan is uh, business intelligence data for the publishing industry for the US market. Um, the, the benefit we offer to uh, IBPA members is a heavily discounted subscription rate to BookScan and also PubTrack Digital. Um, we work with publishers of all size from the, the very biggest in the US market down to uh, smaller guys and independent publishers. Some of you guys on the, on the line, I'm sure, are in that kind of bracket. Uh, we also work with uh, retailers. Our, our, our data primarily comes from retailers, so they're very important partners of ours. Uh, and for other people in the media, film and TV studios, some toy companies, uh, those kind of things. So today we're primarily going to talk about BookScan and give some examples of how you would use BookScan data to answer some business questions for yourselves as, as publishers. Um, hopefully some of you on the line are already taking advantage of this benefit. So um, this will be useful for you to hopefully make the most of what you already have. Uh, for those of you that perhaps uh, don't currently sign up to BookScan or are not so aware of what we offer, this uh, will give a bit, a bit of an introduction to you as to, to what's available. So just a couple of points to note on BookScan and basically what the product is, where the data comes from. Uh, BookScan is a very extensive database of which books are selling in the US um, on a weekly basis and is very comprehensive in terms of the coverage. So the data we get is from a pretty comprehensive panel from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, Target, and around 500 independent stores uh, and a bunch of other retailers that provide us with their data to create a, a comprehensive overview of what's happening in the US market. We get all that data at the ISBN level on a weekly basis. We load it into our database, we make that available to our clients. Uh, we then provide that through our kind of system of um, online tools, which is what we're going to look at today. It, it's basically our BookScan interface. And as we start kind of talking about how this would actually work for you, we've structured this around a few kind of business questions that you might have as a publisher. And we'll walk through these scenarios in terms of um, how you could use the BookScan data to answer these questions. Uh, so just to reiterate, we're going to concentrate on BookScan, which is print book data. 
we do have the PubTrack digital service, which is eBooks data. It works in a pretty similar way, uh, but we will focus on just print books for today's presentation. So the questions I'm going to try and cover and sort of show you how you might get to this kind of data in book scan would be um, understanding how your own titles are performing in the market. And really the purpose of that, or the reason that publishers would look to book scan for that is that our reporting is pretty uh, timely. We tend to report about four days after the end of the uh, kind of sales week, uh, which for a lot of retailers is a lot, is a lot quicker than you're going to get um, sales reported back directly from the retailer. Uh, also, BookScan gives a level playing field. So if you want to look at your sales and then compare it to another publisher or another title, BookScan uh, gives you access to look at those other publishers and titles and gives you a, a level playing field um, because we get the data kind of on an equal footing for all publishers and titles. Other things we're going to look at will be how you can search for comparison titles when you're looking at uh, perhaps uh, publishing a new book uh, and understanding what the sales potential of that book might be. We're going to look at uh, reviewing bestseller lists to see the top selling titles in particular categories. Uh, and we'll show a few more of our advanced tools. We have an advanced search feature and a market overview feature, which let you drill into BookScan data in much more uh, kind of detailed ways. So I'm going to start with the first of those questions and how we would look at that uh, in BookScan. So I'm actually going to move over to the BookScan interface. So if you have access already, this will be pretty familiar. If you don't, this may be new. Uh, this uh, new version of BookScan has been around for about three months now. We had a, a big kind of refresh. It's made everything much more user friendly and uh, easy to navigate. So if I'm a publisher and I want to understand what my own titles are selling in the market, there's a few ways that I can do that. Uh, one quick and easy way is to actually get a list of ISBNs and put them in this search box up here. So I'm actually going to take a list of ISBNs I have already prepared. So if you have your entire list, you can just copy and paste them into this box, hit go, and you'll be provided with a report that shows you all the data BookScan has for those titles. So the kind of data we have in BookScan, everything is really linked by the ISBN, which is obviously essential for uh, reviewing anything that's happening in the, in the book supply chain. Uh, and using that, we link the metadata for the book to the sales data for the book. So here we have some important metadata uh, attributes, such as the format, the title, price, author, and publisher, and also the publication date. And then to the right of that, we have the sales data that we've um, collected through BookScan. So that's the release to date sales, this week's sales, and year to date sales. Just to note on the release to date sales, BookScan, uh, BookScan data goes back to 2004. So any title published after that point, we'll have a, a comprehensive history for, and we can review that whole uh, kind of history for the title. An older title published before 2004, we're obviously only representing from that point onwards. And actually a few of these titles here are older. So we're seeing the more recent uh, history for these titles. So once you've got to the titles that are of interest to you, and this could be your titles or any other titles you wanted to investigate, there's a whole range of different ways you can in, uh, investigate this data. I'm going to very quickly show you a few of the more detailed reports and then show you how you could save this kind of list for your own use. So if I wanted to look at this top title in more information, in more, in more detail, I could click through on the title and get to very comprehensive detailed reporting. So we have weekly data for that title going back through its entire history. We have data visualizations in this tool that allow you to graph the data and, re and review the sales. So uh, not knowing the history of this title, I'd be very interested in what happened at this point in time where we had a big spike in the, the unit sales for this title. We can do things like zoom in to particular time periods on our on our graphs to see a bit more specifically what was happening and scan through the graph to get a pop up with all the relevant data. We can do things like change this time scale from being the complete history to looking at a year over year basis, which then kind of plots each year one on top of the other so we can see how one year compares to another. If you do happen to have long-standing strong backlist that has a perhaps a seasonal nature, you can um, review how that book is performing this year, for example, versus last year. If it's a kind of Easter holiday title, uh, you could see um, how that was comparing to previous years uh, using using this kind of um, tool. All of the data we have available in BookScan you can export. 
So anything which is a graphic or a graph like this or a chart, you can export that into a PDF or a PNG file. So if you're preparing something like a presentation or you just want to email and share with someone else, you can just grab that image and share it with a colleague to, um, to discuss what you're seeing and work out perhaps what actions you might take based on the data. Quick note on some other things we have here. We have more detailed metadata. Just shows how the title is classified and has the physical characteristics. Uh, this is probably more useful if you're looking at uh, maybe competitor titles um, and you want to make sure that you're looking at a book which closely aligns with what you're publishing or considering publishing as a point of comparison. So things like the physical characteristics and page count might be relevant for you to um, understand that data. We provide an author history. So all books that are by the same author, you can get on one report as well as having the individual titles listed here. And you can click through on any of those to get all of that detail. We have a total sales line that shows the um, aggregate sales for these various time periods for that author. So that's again, the release to date sales this week, year to date. And then we give the previous four full calendar years on this author history report. The last and one of the most detailed bits of the report that we have is actually the geographical breakout of title sales. Uh, so we're pretty simply just mapping the sales here on the uh, US map. This is at what we call the DMA level. The DMA is the designated market area and they are like major metropolitan areas. Uh, so it's usually like a city or maybe a couple of neighboring cities where we group those together as a distinct market and then show the data for that title. So we can hover over these and see the relevant data for those different geographies. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my original list. So, so going back to the example where this is perhaps your list uh, as a publisher and you perhaps want to just see this list on a weekly basis, what we can do from here is actually create a what we call a collection from this list of titles. So I can do that by selecting all of the titles here, just by checking our select box, using the add to collection option, and then giving our collection a name and save again. So once I've done that, I, I, I'm then essentially saving this list of titles for future reference. If I go to my collections homepage, I actually see the list appearing here. And now once that's saved, if I come back in future weeks when we add more data, all of the sales numbers here will be refreshed with the latest release to date sales and this week's sales numbers. One further thing we can do here on the collection is actually to choose a different time period. So we have the defaults, which is released today and this week, but I could choose any other time period from within the book scan uh, kind of history to look at. So for example, I might want to see how my titles did in uh, basically calendar year 2019. So I'm going to add a start and end date of the first week of 2019 through to the last week of 2019. And once I've done that, I'll add an additional column to this report, which has appeared now as defined sales and shows the, the relevant unit sales for that time period in this column. So another way you can search for your own titles is, uh, again, it's a pretty quick and easy way to search. If you don't have a list of all the ISBNs handy, if you have your prefix, you can search in a similar way. So if I just take the ISBN prefix here, uh, we're essentially just searching on a partial ISBN and the database will um, show us anything that matches that. So having just typed in the, the prefix, if I hit search, I'm actually going to end up with the same list. I think I took the same prefix as that list I had. So this would be how you could put together that report of your own titles to review and then save that for future reference uh, when you're looking at um, your performance in the market. Okay. Uh, so the next scenario would be looking at titles um, from other publishers, uh, maybe for a point of comparison. Let me just show my questions. How do I search by comp titles? Yeah. So you have options here in the, the general search in BookScan to search um, specifically by ISBN, by author or title, or you can use search all, and that will look across all of those fields. So actually, if I'm interested in uh, Latin, Latin American history, 
I might want to see has Eduardo Galliano published any other books. So I can do a pretty rough search on uh, his surname and Latin and just see if there are other books in that same kind of uh, area. And actually, it's just multiple versions of the same book that match the criteria there. So if I wanted to be a bit broader and just search for a keyword, I can search again. I'm just going to search for Latin America this time. So you'll notice when you start uh, typing in this search bar, it's a bit like many kind of uh, retail, uh, online retail websites you might go on, or even like Google, you get a, um, an autocomplete, which is going to show uh, kind of relevant and perhaps popular uh, items that might match your, your search. Um, so down below, we have a list of titles that contain that search term. And also we will have potentially authors that match that title. And there actually are a few corporate authors that do contain Latin America in, in the, the name. So if you were doing this and you saw an auto suggestion that actually did match what you were looking for, you could click on that and it would enter the full search term. But I want to just keep this a sort of slightly vaguer search and see what key titles are going to come up when I just search Latin America. So I just hit the search button from there. So essentially, we've just performed a keyword search. We're seeing our same title where we started off at the top, but now we're seeing other titles that um, also contain Latin America uh, within the title. So here, if you wanted to look at some of these uh, History of Latin America books, again, we could select those. And we could do a few things with them. So again, we could add to a collection. We could add a new collection, say this, call this uh, Latin America comp titles and save that collection. So users of BookScan can create as many collections as they like. So subsets of your own titles, multiple collections of other publishers, comp titles potentially, and just kind of keep them in handy groups for your, your future reference. So again, this is now saved. Um, we could add a different um, sales date range. And another thing we can do here is actually graph these titles uh, against each other for a comparison. Again, we just select them, choose to the graph up to 10 titles. And we have our books on the right hand side and our graph here. Uh, this, is, this is a bit complex to view um, to begin with. So there's a few ways we can simplify this. We could change the time period and zoom in on just one particular um, part of that history. But what I'm going to do is actually change our time scale here from being on a calendar basis to being weeks since publication. So what that's doing is lining up these titles um, based on week one, according to their publication date. So we can see how they performed in that first crucial uh, couple of months after publication. And again, if we're thinking about publishing our own book in this uh, subject area or category, this might help inform decisions about, you know, what should, what should the print run be? What should the expectations be? Um, if you're pitching this to retailers, you might refer to these titles and say, this title performed uh, very well when it was published. Our title will be in the same vein. We think we should make a buy um, that uh, that's in line with how these previous titles have done. So again, here we're seeing the uh, performance based on week one, and we can scan through that history and see how sales have changed over time for those various books. And again, we can export that graph or we can export the data um, kind of underlying that in terms of the uh, an Excel grid uh, and use that data for, for whatever you need it for. So another way to explore titles or comp titles is to look at bestseller lists. And if you're new to BookScan, you actually wouldn't have anything saved here and you would create your bestseller list using our uh, green plus button. We have a few different flavors of these lists. You can look at a, a weekly list, a year to date list, a regional list, which would be based on just one of those DMAs we saw on the map earlier, or a publisher list based on a specific publisher name. Uh, the weekly lists give you the most options in terms of the format and category filters you're going to you can apply. So here, again, thinking about our kind of history example, we could just find the history category. Uh, we could apply further filters and say, I just want to see hard covers. Okay, let's do that just for this example. Uh, we could also filter on what we call vintage. 
which is whether the title is front list or back list. Uh, and our definition of those two things, front list is anything published within the last 12 months, back list anything published before that time. So to use the best sellers, you come here, you choose which type of list, add the filters, and then give them the, the list a name. I feel like my typing gets worse when people are watching, even if they're watching virtually. And then we can view and save that bestseller list. So now we have the relevant titles based on those criteria. So based on the, the current week and the other criteria we set. And we'll see a ranking on the left hand side, the same metadata we saw before. Uh, uh, this week's sales, last week's sales uh, and year to date sales for those titles. Um, and again, if you want to then investigate these titles uh, further to understand in more detail, uh, you can click through on the title. Uh, you can also actually do like a shift click and open that in a new window. So then I could kind of explore these titles one by one without going back and forth. So I can shift click and open this title in a new window, have a look at what's interesting there, then kind of give it back to my list, look at another one, uh, and so on, just so you don't have to keep on going back and forth in the same window, which is something I find quite useful. Uh, within the bestseller list, you can then edit these in um, a couple of ways. You can choose a different um, date range. So we're going to default to the current week, but we can click the calendar option and choose any point in time we like. So again, if these are um, perhaps something a bit more seasonal, you might want to see what was the top selling titles around uh, the holiday period, for example which is the last week of sales just running up to Christmas um, last year. And you could roll that back any time to um, 2004 when the book scan data starts. So you, there's a lot of uh, kind of past history there to understand what the top selling titles were at various points in time. The other thing you can do is to edit the criteria. So this is what we set before. We said it was going to be weekly um, nonfiction and hardcover. We could change these filters and move to trade paperback, and maybe we will just do front list. And then we can view the revised list. Apologies for the sirens in the background. That's the sound of uh, my Brooklyn neighborhood on a hot and sunny Tuesday afternoon. Um, again, so this functions like the other screens we've seen. If you, if you are using this to do some research on previous titles that have sold well and you find things that are of interest, you can just very quickly say, this is a relevant book, this is a relevant book, this is relevant for me too. Um, I want to save those to a collection and create another new collection to, again, store them together. I think I saw a question coming about exporting to Excel, so I'll just show you quickly one example of that. Um, on pretty much any page you can export into Excel, you have the choice to export all of the rows, or if you've selected just individual rows, you can just uh, export what's relevant for you. Um, as I'm doing here, and actually just show me those lines, just those lines I selected in an Excel document. And then obviously, if you're compiling that with some other data, or perhaps want to use that in your own presentation or, com or communications, um, you, can, you can take that offline in Excel and, and work with that however you need to. Okay, checking back on my questions and scenarios. So we've covered um, how you would get to look at your own titles, how you can search for other titles by authors and keywords and bestseller lists. Um, so the last couple of things I'm going to show you would be how to drill into the data a, a bit further using a couple of the more advanced tools we have. Uh, these are available in our kind of full level access. There are, there are two levels of access we offer to the IBPA members. Again, it's, it's a heavily discounted, so there's a kind of uh, less deluxe version which is at the, the lowest price point and then there's the, the kind of standard service which actually would give you these advanced tools the advanced search and market overview so the advanced search um, gives you much more filtering ability than either searching in our regular search that we saw earlier or the bestseller list because you can combine multiple search terms in what you're looking for here so we started out looking at uh, Latin American history books, and I think there's probably a specific VISAC code I can get to for that, and there is. So history slash uh, Latin America is its own VISAC code. So I was looking by keyword earlier, and some of those titles that will contain Latin America, some of them may not contain that in the title, so that uh, is not necessarily going to give us 100% of what might be relevant for our searching. Um, 
and I can set some more criteria to zoom into what I think is relevant. So again, I'm going to say hard covers, um, and I want to look at more recent publications. So I'm going to set a publication date range here and say, um, I only really want to see titles that have been published in the last couple of years. So I'm going to look at uh, titles published from January 1st, 2018 onwards. Um, so I'm just I'm using three filters here, but you could use one or all of these to try and drill down to a specific segment of the market or group of titles that are relevant for you. That's everything from, from uh, author or title keyword searches to publishers. Um, some of the things we've seen already, format and vintage, uh, th these classification category filters, which are at the level of super category, which is kind of high level, just splitting into adult fiction versus nonfiction, et cetera, or the subcategories, which are more detailed. But then coming to BISAC, which is more detailed again. At level one, it's the kind of top level subject area. Level two gets you quite a lot more specific and gives you a lot of granularity to investigate the data. Um, I'm going to use the publication date range. You can also use a price point range. Um, you can add a release to date sales range. If you actually feel like um, I want to pitch this book, but realistically, I don't want to be comparing to books that have sold 100,000 or even 50,000. You could put an upper limit on this to, to limit the search results you're going to see. You also put a page count range in there if that's relevant, again, to, to try and find the most similar books. Uh, and you could add a user defined sales time period, as we saw on the collections earlier. Um, but I'm going to stick with these three filters hardcover, history, Latin America, published since uh, the start of 2018. And I will be presented with a list of results which will be sorted in release to date sales order um, and that match the, um, the criteria that I entered. So here we've got a couple of hundred titles, uh, probably still a few too many to be going through just um, like visually to find what's most relevant to you. Um, so we can actually refine this search. And I didn't have a price range filter, but I'm going to actually put one in now. And so I just want to see things that are priced over $30. We run the search. That didn't actually make too much difference because uh, probably because we're looking at hardcovers. Um, maybe let's look for really uh, priced hardcovers. Okay, so we still we've still got quite a large number, but we can refine down further by adding filters to get to a, a smaller set of titles. So to search again, I can just clear all and start a new search. Uh, another example that I've given here um, for how we might use this rather than the basic search would be um, if you want to look at a specific author, but you know they have hundreds or thousands of titles and want to narrow that down. So if I choose a very much a best-selling, long-standing author, um, Stephen King, where there will be certainly hundreds of titles, but I'm going to add some other um, filters to limit this to something a bit more manageable. Uh, and here, let's just say what, what's been published since 2019. So 21 hardcovers of various titles in, in various versions from Stephen King over that time period. Uh, if I felt that was too restrictive and I wanted to see uh, everything that he published, I can remove the format filter. Uh, that will actually, I think I updated a couple of the filters there. So now, yeah, the, the full Stephen King list would be 1,200 plus titles. So adding the other filters really helps to zoom in into something that's, that's more relevant for you when doing, uh, when doing some research. OK, just coming on to the final tool I will quickly show you from BookScan. And it's our market overview data. So everything we've looked at so far has been getting us to sales data and um, information and kind of business intelligence at the level of an individual book or author uh, and how that has sold kind of individually. In the market overview data, we're going to see basically how the overall market has performed. So aggregate sales of all books in the US market. And then we can filter that to look at specific segments of the market. Again, maybe based on uh, a niche you're publishing in, into already or, or are interested in publishing into. So again, we've got some nice data visualization going on here. So um, to make it easier to understand what's going on rather than having to look at a whole grid of numbers. And the first graph we have is weekly sales for the overall market. You can see we've got uh, before, 
prior years here and current year to date. And you can pretty quickly see once we check that the gray line is year to date that actually since about uh, mid April on a weekly basis, we've been tracking ahead of last year comfortably every week. Um, surprising, pleasing, given the um, strange times that the world and uh, any kind of retail businesses are, are seeing right now. Uh, we can filter these in a few ways to make that a bit simpler. I can actually just say, uh, let's look at the year to date and the prior year to just really focus on the most recent time. Uh, we have the same tool we saw before. Well, now this is being a bit temperamental where we can zoom in on a shorter time period using this timeline tool. And the other default graphs we have on this page, if we scroll down, will show us the annual totals for the past uh, few years and year to date. So US market is currently just over 377 and a half million units year to date based on our measurement. And down the bottom, we have a kind of percent change versus, versus a year ago. So we're actually the, the overall market as we measure it, print books only, is up four and a half percent compared to last year. So that is showing the overall market as a default. We can look at the numbers behind the graphs by selecting the grid option. We'll go back to the graph. And again, we can export either, either the image or the, um, the Excel. But obviously, you're probably not um, publishing in every category. So you might want to look at a specific category that you are active in to zoom in. So again, we can just look at history and see how that's performing right now. So we've applied that filter um, and we see kind of on par at the start of the year dip as we were going into lockdown. Uh, and only more recently actually has this category overtaken last year uh, in the last kind of uh, month and a half or so. Once you add those filters, then you can add multiple filters. So we could look at uh, history hardcovers, history front list to make that even more um, focused. But once we've added the filter, that actually applies to all of the graphs on this page. So we're now seeing total units sold in that history subcategory and seeing the percent change in the, in the history subcategory. So uh, year to date, still a bit ahead of last year, not quite on a par with the overall market. But uh, again, a, a lots of uh, reassuring kind of positives in terms of how we're seeing the market performing right now. So this is really how you would investigate um, subject areas, formats for kind of uh, broader trends rather than looking at specific titles in those areas. Um, okay, just to finish off, the other couple of things we have in the market overview are publisher rankings. These do only really include our top publisher families, which are the top 25 or 26 publishers in the market uh, and what their unit sales and market share is. Again, this filter is carried through. So we're seeing the same thing. Just history, just history numbers here. And on the regional index, where we looked at this map before, we were looking at how an individual title performed geographically. Uh, this regional index map here is showing us how this uh, subcategory is performing. So whatever filters we apply here on the left hand side, we'll get a kind of heat map of if that's overperforming or underperforming performing compared to general book sales in the US. Again, we can hover over, we can see the sales for each of those areas. Okay. So that's a kind of quick like scenario or question based walkthrough of BookScan. If you're already subscribing or thinking about subscribing, we do have um, like much more detailed sort of training videos that would show you all of the options I really just skimmed through um, in, in the last half an hour or so. Um, yeah, so I, I, th I think Brianna's been uh, covering some questions in the chat, but happy to circle back on any other questions or show you any other things within the BookScan interface. Um, whatever anyone would like to know more about. You want to catch that last one um, about charting sales on a BISAC level? Yeah. Uh, Don Runpath is asking, can one chart growth on sales on a BISAC level? Hence that in tier one or tier two. So, so yeah, this would be in the regional index information um just trying to think the quickest way to do this um this generally is giving us the snap a snapshot of one point in time uh let me see what we get yeah. so 
so I'm, I'm just trying to think how I would do this. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. This is giving us the thir uh, 13 weeks of sales. Uh, we can change the time period to a longer time period. So we, we would have to run a couple of reports and compare those to see the growth over time. Um, yeah, I think that some of this may still be in the, the report builder, which is the other kind of tool we have available. So we've been looking at the new book scan interface, which is pretty user friendly, pretty simple, pretty visual. We also have access to report builder, which I think is just with the tier two access where it's, it's less intuitive, but you can build reports to, um, to like look at DMA performance in, in that kind of way. So I think that would be this kind of DMA year to date sales report. So, so, so the, the tool we were looking at mostly is, uh, as I say, visual, quick, user-friendly. The, the report builder tool, which is still part of that package, that tier two package, is more of a kind of analyst, like data mining tool. So it's not quite as easy as click a button and you see the data, uh, but we do get some of that more detailed information here. So um, this is currently showing the total market um, year to date of the current year versus year to date of 2019 and showing us total sales by the 99 DMAs, those metropolitan areas we make available. Um, so this kind of pre-canned version of the report gives you those two time periods. You can customize, customize those time periods to look over um, kind of longer history of uh, growth or decline uh, in DMAs. And you could further filter by a specific category. Uh, let's just find history again. So this will show us uh, just that subcategory, current year, previous year, and where we're seeing growth or decline. So actually New York has declined a bit in history sales. Uh, LA has grown a bit. DC is down, Boston is down. Uh, Chicago is up uh, and so on through, through the list. I think I just saw a question pop up about audio books. So, Physical audio um, is actually included within BookScan. Obviously, that market has been declining pretty steadily over quite a while now. Um, but as much as there are still some uh, basically CD and physical audio books sold, they're in BookScan. So uh, we say BookScan is print books. It would probably be more accurate to say it's physical book products. Um, so a, a physical audio book will be within BookScan. And I think we should find the format here in our filters, physical audio. There we go. Um, digital audio, which obviously much more of a growth area, we are in the process of adding to PubTrack Digital. So PubTrack Digital is right now ebooks, it's ebooks only. Um, we'll be adding digital audio uh, within the next few months. Any questions we missed or other things to look at here? There aren't any specific questions or if people are formulating them, I'll just jump in for a minute to talk about the IBPA benefits specifically. So as IBPA members, you guys are eligible to get a 50% discount on our services. There are two tiers of access. Um, we did try to call out where the line between tier one and tier two fell in this demonstration. Um, tier one is essentially the ability to look up individual title level products where tier two adds the market level information. Um, in order to be eligible for those discounts, you need to uh, maintain your IBPA membership throughout the length of your subscription with us. And there are revenue caps. Essentially, these discounts are intended for small publishers who wouldn't otherwise be able to access our services. Um, so there are details on that page that I just heard this link about how to subscribe to that. Um, I've been the IBPA 
members keep contact at Bookscan since 2008. So if you already subscribed, chances are we have corresponded. And if you don't yet subscribe but are interested, you can feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, my name is Brianna O'Driscoll, and my email is just my first dot last name at npd.com. And that is also available on that uh, benefit description page on the app. So if you're interested in subscribing, then you would just reach out to me and identify yourself as an IBPA member. And I'll be happy to provide any additional information or answer any questions you guys have via email as well. Yeah, so I just I just posted a link in the chat box also to our uh, book scan uh, resource page, which if we do have existing subscribers on the line, um, that still we might need some more guidance on all the reporting that's available. If you go to the that URL um, that I just posted, there are um, maybe half a dozen or more uh, kind of uh, training videos that range from about 10 minutes to probably 20 minutes uh, that give you a much more comprehensive um, kind of program about all of the functionality of this new site. Okay, any more questions for today? Someone had asked a question earlier. I don't think I saw an answer for it. Um, they said that when you add a retailer such as Walmart after 2004, this changes the understanding of comprehensive, correct? Or do you back build the data to 2004? Um, a little bit of both. So actually, I think Walmart are in the data from around 2010. Um, so generally, when we add new retailers, um, we we get sort of recent history from them. We, we generally try and get at the very least the prior year. So that if we're doing a year on year comparison, we can always feel like we have a consistent base of retailers that are included. Um, but that, that's, a, that's a fair point that um, comparing 2004 to 2014, for example, um, uh, things have changed. So in 2014, we have Walmart uh, on the flip side. In 2004, we would have had borders. So, um, you know, partly it's the actual retail market itself changes and partly it, it's um, changes to our panel. Um, I would say, given our, we, we estimate our overall coverage at about 85% of the of um, print book sales being uh, measured in book scan. Um, and yeah, we feel like we have kind of all the big players on board in terms of giving pretty, pretty comprehensive coverage. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, also it, it gives a, a level playing field if you're comparing yourself to another publisher, then it, it's the same panel for everyone. So it's it's pretty um, a pretty fair comparison. It's kind of as apples to apples as we can be uh, in the data. I'll elaborate on that, that prior to up to 2018, whenever a new retailer was added, it was just on a go forward basis. And so that was factored into our timing for adding them. Most new retailers were added on the first of the year. First of the year. Um, since we've moved over to NPD systems, we are, the data is dynamic, so we're able to update historical data. And so since so moving to NPD systems in 2018, we do aim to add some recent history as well. So the, the, the most recent retailers we've been working on adding is actually some uh, like comic book stores. The, we've seen really strong growth in sales of comic and graphic novels books. Um, so, you know, we're, we're already getting that data from the existing panel, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, everyone else. Um, obviously, those books are also selling through the actual comic book store channel. So we've started adding those retailers to the data as well um, from the start of this year, which is it's not massive in terms of the overall market, but will um, increase their coverage for, for comics and graphic novels. Any more questions? Okay, so there's nothing else for today. We're happy to give everyone a few minutes back. Anything from your side, Christopher, you wanted to cover before we Wrap up. Uh, well, uh, so we went over the pub track. We went to BookScan. Um, did you want to add anything specifically about PubTrack Digital, 
um, uh, we because that's also that's something good. we offer. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So I guess uh, in terms of the reporting in this tool, uh, it's going to look very much the same. So I can move from Bookscan to PubPrep Digital within the same system. Um, so probably take a moment to, uh, to update. So we have all the same tools and reporting available with the exception of the geographical information. We don't have a geographical breakout for, for eBooks. Um, we can search by titles, authors, publishers, subject areas, all that same stuff. Um, we get the same kind of market overview as we saw for Bookscan. So really seeing really strong growth in uh, eBooks, the kind of uh, going into lockdown period. Uh, a lot of major trade publishers were saying that they uh, had that kind of spark, spike. And that's definitely what we're seeing in the data. Uh, I think the, the, the major differences um, between Bookscan and PubPrep Digital is really like where we get the data from. Uh, um, so Bookscan, as we mentioned a few times, all that data comes from retailers. It's essentially POS data, um, sales going through the tills or online sales that come to us at the ISBN level from the retailers. Um, on PubTrack Digital, we get the data from the publisher. So the reason we do that is obviously um, we have one very dominant retailer in the ebook uh, sphere who doesn't want to share their data with us. So the workaround is to get this data from publishers. So um, publishers who want to participate in PubTrack Digital um, actually provide us with their data, uh, which we then combine with all the other publishers' data to provide this kind of measure of the overall ebook market. So one publisher can compare themselves to another uh, in that format as well as in, uh, in print. Um, because of that different mechanism, the data is uh, monthly rather than weekly, and it's also slower to arrive. So um, we released the May data just in the last couple of weeks. Um, so it takes obviously time for, for the retailer to report to the publisher, then the publisher to report to us and us to upload the data. So it, it's not as uh, as quick to turn around with the book scan data. But otherwise, it, it's a kind of similar data set. You know, for certain types of book and author, uh, ebooks are a very large proportion of their um, sales now. Um, we see that with the initial digital audio data we have. Um, so for certainly for certain types of books and authors, um, seeing the ebooks and then adding the digital audio is, is really going to be needed to give the, the full picture of, uh, of what's happening in that part of the market. Um, I will say it's, it's, it exists within the same tool, but um, the uh, but it is kind of a, a separate or additional subscription. So you can choose to subscribe to Bookscan um, on its own, just print books or Bookscan and PubTech Digital if that's relevant for you um, and your business. Yeah, and to answer, some people were still confused about the subscription. So MPD Bookscan and the MPD PubTrack Digital are two separate things. Um, I've included the links in the chat, um, but you have to subscribe to them separately if you want the physical one or then the PubTrack Digital is for eBooks. Uh, so, um, but I've been including the links. So just look for things where I can uh, include them again. Um, and uh, there's one other question from Peter Goodman. Uh, so if um, the big A is not providing, oh, oh, for a second I was like, who's the big A? And I was like, oh, okay, I got it now. <laughs> um, if they're not providing you data for eBooks, how would an indie publisher who does not share data with you get reliable info on your own books? Uh, no, that, that's a relevant question and, and one we've had before um, from, from like, you know, on, on other occasions that because that data comes from publishers, um, we, we're not getting data from elsewhere on top of what you would give us effectively. So for, I say for a publisher to have access to our data, you would have to give us your data. Um, so you would only see the data you gave us for your own publications. The, the benefit for publishers is to see all the other publishers uh, and what they're doing in the ebook format. Um, but you're right that there's, there's not anything extra we could give you to more quickly um, or independently get a view of your ebook sales uh, other than what you get from retailers. And Brianna, is there anything you wanted to add about the PubTrack digital subscription? Because um, before you talked about the BookScan one, um, or, or are they kind of just the, the same 50% and um, or anything? 
as far as the the tiers and access levels, they they are comparable and reach out to me for both of those. Um, the only thing I will add, and David's mentioned it, but I'll emphasize it again, that for public digital, uh, because it is a publisher aggregated data system, uh, you do need to supply us with your ebook sales data in order to subscribe if you want to use proprietary published ebooks. I, I did just pick up a question that I think snuck into the Q and A rather than the chat, which was about whether this was whether what we covered was tier one or tier two. I think Brianna was uh, fielding a couple of those questions as, as we went along. But in terms of what we covered when looking at book scan, the things that are tier two and Brianna, correct me if I'm wrong with this, uh, it's it's only the advanced search and the market overview that are tier two, and the other elements, so the basic searching, creating collections. Accessing bestseller lists a tier one. Yeah. And that's kind of why we spent a, a little bit less time on those those advanced features, the tier two features. Well, that was incredibly informative. Uh, so I, unless someone else has another question, um, you know, we do have in the IBPA membership benefits handbook. Uh, Brianna's um, email contact and all that. So you can also reach out to her through that. But um, did you all want to add anything else? Just kind of like a general overview about um, the, the different benefits that IBPM members get? Uh, I think we've probably covered it. Yeah, it's so uh, two tiers, two products effectively. Um, yeah. Well, yes. yep. Oh, sorry, please. Oh, no, I think we've covered it all. Yeah. Uh, well, I know how busy y'all are, and uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Our members appreciate it. This is now going to, this is recorded. So uh, I'm going to be posting, uh, extending this to people. People are going to have access to it. So um, if they have any general questions about the program, they'll be able to see this video. Um, but we really appreciate you taking the time to kind of break it down for us because uh, um, it is a very comprehensive uh, program. So I know there's a lot to it. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, thanks.